Yes, indeed, please. Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, Stephen's got a certain point that culture has a relevance in our beliefs. I think he's being a little bit strong in so, in so vociferous opinions that he's presenting to us, in suggesting to us that he's above an influence of the culture. And Stephen yeah, wouldn't be an atheist if he was born in one of the many other areas where very intelligent people believe there was evidence for God. And that's the key issue. And I think Anthony's right. The, uh, one key issue is, is there evidence for God? Anthony says the evidence is overwhelmingly against God. I would disagree with that. I would say that the evidence, particularly from modern science, is overwhelmingly in favor of God. All these people have used mathematics, for instance, to show how the world is interlinked. So they've shown us how, for instance, uh, a butterfly in South America can affect the, we the weather patterns here in London. They've shown us how events millions of years ago at the beginning of evolution have determined the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in this studio today. They've shown that everything is linked together and rather like to resurrect an old argument, rather like a watch, when you see that everything is linked together in balance very clearly as a unity, you say, well, there must be an explanation. But actually, the way that you've described the processes of evolution yourself are precisely the ways in which we do not need a designer. You said that we need to explain something, there must be a reason. An explanation does not demand a supernatural reason. An explanation demands a logical account of how we can have got from here to there. You know, maybe he, he can avoid the word supernatural. Why it is, we should not invoke a mind for the whole cosmos, which we know is a unity, unless he wants to deny that it all fits together as one thing. Why we should not go beyond the universe, go beyond the natural world for an explanation, in the same way as we do for a human artifact, why a watch. We, why should we, when we can have a perfectly satisfactory explanation of how watches are made by humans, and how humans have evolved, as it were, over the last four and a half billion years without that, you're demanding that we have something on top of that. I'm saying there is no need for it. What I'm saying is that we're now in a position, because of modern science, because it's shown the that the universe yes. is a unity, and maybe Stephen can tell us whether he believes the universe does fit together. Everything has a place and a purpose within the whole of the cosmos. But isn't that just a matter of definition? <laughs> uh, this has a unity no, at the moment. This microphone is part of my hand and part of my arm. But, but you know, if I take it away, it isn't anymore. It just depends how you define things, doesn't it? Well, uh, no, it's a little bit more than that because it is defined, and because of that, my voice is being broadcast over airwaves very successfully, and you know it is. It works. The mathematics is true. True. It, it's successful. It's telling us something now, true supposing, about the way... Supposing that, somebody came along and actually explained to your satisfaction how the universe, assuming it didn't need a beginning, how it began, how life began, supposing that could be done by hmm. science, would you still believe in God? Well, uh, my question would be, is, is this argument within the system, in which case, in what sense does it explain something which holds together uh, which has lots of parts which hold together as one thing. If the explanation is within the system, in what sense is it an Ludo explanation? Ludovic. Well, I want, I'd like to ask you one question, and that is, you would agree that God is an immaterial being? Yes. How did an immaterial being create a material universe? Well, uh, how d I believe that my mind is immaterial. I believe I'm free. I believe it's more than matter. I'm not therefore, asking about you. Well, but I'm not okay, asking about I you and your watch. mind. I'm well, asking about God. Okay. When a mind thinks of something, it is possible for it to exist. And God is the ultimate mind. Just like when my mind thinks of a microphone, we can make something new, a microphone, not part of nature, it wasn't there before, when God's mind thinks of something mathematically as one thing, it exists because he is the so ultimate being. So you're saying we're a figment in God's imagination? No, not a figment, because when God knows something, it exists. But so it, we are real. We are real. And but maybe we this is a vital difference, you know, between believers and non-believers, which is believers need to have uh, a sense of reason, uh, not reason, but it's kind of an excuse for an explanation and justice, whereas in a way, if you're a non-believer, you're, uh, you're able to accept the randomness of the universe. Okay, well, let, let, me, let me bring very, very, very quick point. I need God as a plant needs the sunshine. It doesn't mean the sun doesn't exist because the plant needs the sunshine. It's quite the opposite. It means that he does exist.